In this video, I will show you how to use the gradebook feature in Adgenuity to monitor your students' progress. To access the gradebook, go to the tabs at the top, highlight over the Courses tab, and then select Gradebook. Once the gradebook loads, you want to make sure that you choose the correct course from the list of courses available, and then to make sure that you have access to only your students that you want to see, you want to choose your different groups. So in this case, I'm going to stick with period two. Once you can see all of your students, you are able to start monitoring their different progress. The first three columns in the gradebook will remain the same, and that includes the student's name, their overall progress, and their overall grade. So in the overall progress area, you are going to see whether or not your students are behind, on pace, or ahead. Red indicates that they are behind pace, blue indicates they are right where they should be, and green indicates they are ahead. You can also tell based on the black line in the middle of the progress bar. The overall grade is based on the work that they have completed so far. This does not include any of the work that they are behind on that would ultimately be zeros. Now this side of the gradebook that's highlighted in blue is going to change depending upon the options you select. And those options are chosen up here in this area. There are three ways to view progress, and that's by looking at the activities, quiz scores, and test scores. However, the test scores are not something that is applicable to those that are in the instructional continuity plan. So we are just going to focus on the activities and the quiz scores. In the activities, once you select this option, you also are going to choose the unit that you would like to review. So in this case, this course has six units. We will stick with unit one, and then you are going to choose the lesson within that unit. In this case, there's five lessons and we will stick with lesson one. Now you're going to see all of the activities that the students participate in within that specific lesson. So in this case, this lesson has a warm up, instruction, a summary, assignment, and quiz. The warm ups, instructions, and summary are all participation there are a series of videos, and students don't actually get graded on these specific activities. Once they have completed them, the system will note 100% to show that they are completed. However, these 100% are not being factored into the overall grade. For the assignments and quizzes, however, those are what make up the overall grade. Students are given two attempts for quizzes and the highest score is counted. You can always reset assignments or add retakes to quizzes and we will discuss how to do that in just a moment. So for these, for these assignments, we can see that the students had a variety of scores. The scores in black are all passing, but the score here in red is below the passing threshold of 60%, so it's gonna be highlighted so that you can see the student did not pass this assignment. Now, assignments are typically a series of slides in which students read scenarios and are given questions. Assignments are more formative in nature, and students have the ability to go back and make corrections. Quizzes are typically a 10 questions based on the lesson material. Um, they are not able to go back and make changes once they've submitted their quiz. As you can see, there's typically a correlation between how the student does on an assignment and how they do on the quizzes. So this is going to be just an overall snapshot if you're wanting to look at each lesson. Keep in mind, a lesson is going to take the students about two to three days if they're following the guidelines of 30 to 45 minutes per day in the course. The next thing we're going to look at is this quiz, the quiz scores tab. So when we click on quiz scores, at this point, it's going to default to a unit, usually unit one. 
but it's not going to necessarily pick a lesson. You can choose to drill down, but each lesson is only going to have one quiz, so I typically leave it just as the unit, and this gives you an overview of the quiz scores for that entire unit. So again, if they're, the quiz score is in black, the student did pass that quiz. However, you'll notice sometimes a 60% is not necessarily what we want to see for our students. And so you do want to make sure you're still looking at all of the scores just to make sure that the students are um, getting through the lessons and unit uh, in understanding the material because the quiz scores are a very good indication of their understanding. Now that we have highlighted what the gradebook looks like, I want to show you a couple of the features that you can do within the gradebook. So if you are looking at a student's um, progress, let's take this student right here, and we see that the student has scored a 60, then there's a 70 and a 60 here, so we're a little concerned. Um, you're able to drill into the actual um, assignment or quiz in this case, so we will click right here, and you're going to get a pop-up. This pop-up is going to give you some more information pertaining to that specific activity. So you are going to um, get just a recap of the student and the unit and the lesson it's in. It's going to tell you the activity type. It's also going to mention the grade weight and category. So um, this will look different as this isn't one of the continuity courses, uh, but you will see a percentage here and, and that just shows what percentage of the overall grade the quizzes as a whole are counting towards. Um, but this is an average of all quizzes that gets counted towards the overall grade. You're also getting some um, options. And we'll talk about those in just a second. And then you're going to see the attempts made. Now, in this case, this student attempted to take the uh, quiz I'm sorry, two times. That is the most that they are given without teachers uh, going in and, and making changes. So the system will automatically let them take a quiz twice, and this student did so. And as you can see, the highest that the student got was a 60%. So that is what was counted. Now. Let's say the student is not happy with the 60% and you've remediated with them and you would like to give them another opportunity. You can add a retake by selecting this option, giving them one retake, and then you hit submit, and that's going to give them the opportunity to go back and take the quiz for a third time. Um, again, I, I would be very cautious to only do this after remediation has occurred and use it uh, sparingly because students do tend to take advantage of multiple attempts. Also, after about four to five attempts, the quiz banks will start to run out and students may start seeing um, questions that they've already been asked. The next thing you can do is you can actually change the score. So let's say you speak to the student on the phone, um, you talk with them, you go over it, you remediate, and you think that the student now has been able to show mastery. You are able to go in and manually change their score to whatever you feel that they are truly at at this point. So if they have, you feel truly mastered it in entirety, you can give them a 100% and you can indicate why. Maybe the student completed a paper worksheet and then you can submit and that's going to override the 60% and give that student a 100. And then the last option here is resetting an activity. When you reset an activity, that is going to force the student to go back into that activity. You can reset warm-ups, instructions, summary, quizzes, uh, assignments. You can pretty much reset anything. Um, and that's going to make them go back. So if you want a student who only gets 60 to maybe relook at um, an instruction, how you would do that is you would go and actually click into the instruction, not necessarily the quiz, but the instruction, and you would reset. If you reset a quiz, it's very, very important to know that they have to have retakes available. So in this case, this student does not. So I would have to add a retake before I reset the activity. 
it can be done after as well, but ultimately the student will not be able to retake this quiz until you give them another retake, even if you reset it. It's basically going to force them there and then they're going to be stuck. So it's very, very important that when you reset quizzes, you add retakes. This is not something that's applicable to assignments or instruction, but when you reset quizzes, you also have to make sure they have a retake available to them. So I want to go to back to activities and I want to show you what that screen would look like if you are talking about um, the instruction or a summary or something that isn't necessarily assessed. So if I was to click on this student's instruction, as you can see, um, I don't need to, I don't get the retake option because there are no retakes for instruction. Um, there's really no need to change the score for uh, the instruction because it's basically just watching videos, but I, I can reset and this is where a situation in which I don't think the student has really paid attention and I want them to re-watch the videos to maybe kind of relearn the material and I would reset the activity and that is going to force this student to re-watch the videos that were in this instruction. I also want to show you some of the things that you can do with uh, activities that have not been completed. So I'm going to switch the unit and we're going to look at unit two. Now we can see that some of the students have not gotten through unit two at this point. So these students have, but we have some students that have blanks. So first off, this student here in the warm up, you're gonna see this little um, kind of flag. This means that that student has started this activity and is where they currently are in the course. With the blanks, however, there are some things that you can do. So let's say we know specifically that this student has already participated in um, learning regarding the principles and the preamble and we don't want them to necessarily have to sit through the instruction again on this topic. Um, so we can click on the blank space and we are actually given an option to bypass this activity. And when we bypass an activity, what that means, and you might want to give a reason, I would highly encourage just typing a, a quick reason um, for whatever reason, and then you would submit. And what happens when you bypass is that means the student does not have to complete those videos. Um, so it is a by, you'll start, you'll see a B here and that means that um, that activity has been bypassed. And if at any point you do that and want to then remove that bypass, which means the student will be forced back into it, you can just click on the B and then remove bypass. That was an overview of all the functions available within the gradebook. Anything that you would need for progress monitoring or the adjusting of grades within Edgenuity can basically be done from the gradebook. However, there are alternative ways that you can accomplish most of these outcomes. The gradebook just provides a, a one-stop shop for getting everything done in a very easy to view snapshot of your students as a whole in their progress.